And Bank Group CEO is raising the red flag for the banking industry in 2017. Sulaiman Mohammad Tahir said he is worried about the outlook for the first half of next year and only expects to see an improvement during the second half. Initially, he said there could have been some reversal in the first half, but the uncertainty persisted. He attributes the situation to events like Brexit and the US presidential election to making market direction even more unclear. However, despite the slow economic environment, the group is optimistic on its loan growth to increase between 4% and 5% for FY17, as opposed to only 2% in the previous year. Backed by growing infrastructure development and its smaller starting base, which allows ample room for the group to grow. AirAsia says it has already hedged 75% of its fuel requirements for its flights next year and the hedging price is about 59 USD per barrel. Group CEO Tony Fernandez took to Twitter to dispute reports that the LCC hadn't yet put in place hedges, saying that most of its planes were hedged. In his own words, Fernandez says that the full-service carriers are running around like headless chickens as LCCs continue to close the gap. Adding that Philippine and Indonesia are upbeat and together with AirAsia X, it makes an unbeatable network and frequency that boasts solid ancillary income. Meanwhile, Alliance DBS Research expects fuel prices to edge up on average given that prices had bottomed out in early 2016. The firm's analyst Marvin Kaur said its current assumption is for jet fuel price to average 50 USD in 2016 and 60 USD per barrel in 2017. He added that while airlines have hedged in place to cushion the impact, the firm thinks that margins will decline on a year-on-year -year basis. Opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim lost his final bid for freedom today after a federal court judge rejected his appeal to set aside his sodomy conviction. A five-member panel of judges ruled unanimously that there was no merit in Anwar's application for a review of his 2014 conviction. Having exhausted his final legal option for an acquittal, this means he will have to serve out the remaining 16 months of his prison term. Chief Judge Zukefli Ahmad Makinudin ruled that this is not a fit or proper case for this court to exercise its inherent jurisdiction to initiate a review. Speaking to reporters after the verdict, Anwar said this was part of his long walk to freedom. He said this is not the end of the road and that he had pleaded his innocence but the judiciary had ignored his pleas. Shell has started oil production from the Malikai Tension Lake Platform, or TLP, located 100 clicks off the coast of Sabah. It is Shell's second deep water project in Malaysia, following the Gumusut Kakap Platform in 2014. According to Shell's upstream director, Andy Brown, Malikai marks an important milestone for the oil giant and its partners Sabah and Malaysia, and demonstrates its capability in delivering competitive deep water projects. Malikai is a JV between Shell, Konoko Philips Sabah and Petronas Charigali. According to Shell Malaysia's chairman Ian Lo, the Malikai TLP is designed and built in Malaysia by Malaysians. Malikai is expected to have a peak production of 60,000 barrels per day. Fraser & Neve Holdings will be serving up more of the bubbly with the inauguration of its new PET bottling line. Located in Shah Alam, the line is worth 45 million ringgit and is expected to increase bottle production by 40% or 8 million cases per annum. According to Chief Executive Lim Yu Ho, the automated line will provide a huge boost to improving its production efficiency as well as reducing carbon footprint and that ultimately it will put FNN in a strong position to meet demand for its beverages, especially during festive seasons. The new fully automated line helps to improve efficiency by 12.5%, improve space utilization and reduce energy consumption.